I'm Jesus, and this video is going to look at why I think we need more crowdfunding than just sticker money for the majors, and why this could be a really good thing for CSGO. Now, this video is sponsored by Earn a Skin, the site where you can earn a skin. I'll talk more about them later in the video, and I'm also giving away a knife. Link is in the description. Otherwise though, I think we can get started. So this whole discussion began with a liege. I'm sure most of you know who he is. He's a rifler from Team Liquid. And he tweeted out that the crowdfunded prize pool for the international, the largest Dota event of the year, is already so large that going out in the quarters of that tournament would make more money than most players have ever made from sticker money at CSGO majors. By the way, look at this guy shitting up the replies down here. Anyway, it was a tweet he followed up on Reddit with a more extensive post discussing more details about how much money stickers raise and essentially calling for Valve to find a way to crowdsource larger prize pools for the existing majors. And shortly afterwards, Don Hasey chimed in. Now, I'm still not sure exactly who this guy is, but if you look at the people following him, you can see that this guy is no joke. Well, except for most of the time when he is joking, but in this instance he was being serious, and he claimed that Valve made $414 million from CSGO last year, and that majors are instrumental to drawing new players into the game, and argued that as a result it was only fair that the pro players felt like the major prize pool should be increased. And all of this triggered quite a bit of discussion on Reddit and Twitter. Some people agreed, some people disagreed, and there were a range of objections, which I'm going to do my best to summarise. So the main things that people brought up was that the international is disruptive to the Dota 2 scene and would be bad for CSGO, that stickers already raise plenty of money, that CSGO doesn't have a large enough player base to justify it, that CSGO isn't growing anymore, so Valve isn't putting in the effort, that CSGO's player base doesn't spend money like Dota's does because they have different demographics. And finally, there are people who questioned the importance of needing to increase prize pools in the first place. Now, I have an opinion on this. I think Elige and the Don are right. I think there should be more money in the major prize pools and I think it should be crowdfunded. And I wanna look through all these potential objections to establish why I think this is the case. And I wanna actually begin by focusing on the last point here. Why do we even need a big prize pool? Because the guy who's calling for it, Elige, is a pro player. A, a pro player who not only finished in the top four at the last two majors, but is currently on the number one team in the world and has a very real chance of winning Starletter Berlin. So maybe there are reasons to be slightly skeptical when he says he wants the system change so he makes more money, but you know who doesn't have a financial interest? Don Hasey doesn't. And the reason he wants the major prize pools increased is that he thinks that CSGO majors are a very important factor in bringing new players into the game. Now, this is a claim that you can't really verify with certainty without Valve's internal data. It's just not possible as an outsider. But going off the numbers we do have, it looks a lot like majors have a positive impact on the player base. This graph tracks the average amount CSGO is being played each month. It's not a graph of the number of accounts, so it's not inflated by Smurfs and Cheaters. It's the amount people are playing. And I've marked out every major back to MLG Columbus on it. And what you can see is that majors do appear to be correlated with growth in the player base. It's not a magic bullet for sustained growth either, but the data definitely suggests that it's having a positive impact on how much people are playing. You can see every single major is in green, and most of the time there isn't a catastrophic drop the next month. And this could be new players, it could be existing players playing the game more, but either way, these are still good things for CSGO. And I don't know if I think that this on its own means that pro players deserve a bigger prize pool, but I do know that the international's enormous crowdfunded prize pools bring considerable public attention to Dota and gets a lot of the player base invested in what's happening. And if you try to incorporate that into CSGO's existing major system, which as we can see already leads to quite a bit of player base engagement, well, I can't imagine the results being anything other than positive. But you know what? Don't we already have that with stickers? Well, stickers are great things in some respects. They are legitimately a way of crowdfunding money for pro players. And the way it's structured means that money flows to the smaller teams as well, which was great in the early days of the scene when there are a lot of semi-professional players, but they also don't generate money like they used to. 
Elige says that in his experience, the money has been going down since Cologne 2016, and the actual numbers here are kept in the dark because of non-disclosure agreements, people sign with Valve, but this lines up with what every single other source I've heard on the matter has said about sticker money. Now, it was brought up that Device apparently made $40,000 from stickers at Krakow, and this is true as far as I'm aware. However, if you extrapolate that for all 80 players at the tournament, that means that stickers only raised $3.2 million from players. That's tiny compared to what the international raises, even if you account for the fact there's only two majors a year, and Dota's got its own majors anyway. Now, Krakow, on top of that, seems to have sold an abnormally large number of stickers. If you look at the market listings that people in the sticker investing community use as a proxy for overall rates of investment, you can see that Krakow generally has a lot more stickers than the other recent majors. And on top of that, since Krakow, another eight teams have been brought into the sticker system, which likely diluted the money even further. Now, Valve did switch their Pick'em system to a pass system recently, but this only replaced one incentive to buy with another, and there hasn't been any indication that it's really increased the amount of money being raised. And finally, stickers just don't have the profile that the international prize pool has anyway. It's not public, there's no real media coverage about it, it doesn't engage the people like the international's prize pool or the battle pass that the money is raised from does. Stickers are great, but they're not the same. In fairness, if Valve are going to invest the resources into developing a system like the Battle Pass for CSGO, you'd want there to be a large enough scene to justify it. And CSGO is a smaller game than Dota 2, make no mistake. But it's not that much smaller. There's long been some confusion about whether Steam Charts counts Chinese players. It does. And I'll link an article in the description that demonstrates this. But what counts right now is that it's clear that these numbers accurately reflect the total size of the player base for CSGO and Dota. There's no hidden Chinese market that isn't being counted. And currently, according to Steam Charts, CSGO is about 70% of Dota's size. That's the difference. Now, assuming CSGO players are just as willing to spend money as Dota players, well, a CSGO equivalent of the Battle Pass, assuming it's actually as good as the Battle Pass and players have the same incentive to spend money as Dota players do, should raise about $17.5 million, based on the amount raised for the 2018 International. Now, I can't speak for Valve, I can't speak for how they view things internally, they may know something we don't, but to me, this looks worthwhile. $17.5 million is quite a bit, and I'm sure it would get quite a bit of media attention. Well, unless of course, CSGO players aren't as willing to spend money on the game because its player base has different demographics to Dota. Now, both of these games are played by a huge range of people from a huge range of countries with all sorts of religion, skin colors, income levels, all these things. However, if we were to generalize, Dota 2 has a much larger Asian and particularly Chinese community than CSGO, while as CSGO is more Western centric, a larger proportion of its fan base is in the EU and the USA. So, sorry, Canada, I've cut you out to keep things simple. And there's a perception in the West that the Chinese, for cultural reasons, are more willing to splash out money on in-game microtransactions. And sure, a large proportion of high-end collectors in CSGO when it comes to skins are Chinese. And hey, look, the Chinese government is literally cracking down on gratuitous displays of wealth. However, if we look at the numbers, you'll see a very different picture emerge. So one good bit of analysis comes from this Reddit thread where someone compared the amount of revenue generated by Dota 2 to the amount of revenue generated by CSGO in 2017 and adjusted it for the average number of players at any given point. So revenue raised versus the amount the game is played. CSGO generated about $1,000 per player. Dota 2 generated about $800 per player. So CSGO raised more money per player than Dota 2 did in 2017. Now, I don't have Dota 2's revenue for 2018, but I do have CSGO's. The Don is correct. It's $414 million. Now, CSGO's average player base dropped in 2018, but its revenue has gone up, and now, instead of making $1,000 per average player, it's making more like $1,250. So, unless something radical has happened with Dota 2 in the meantime, CSGO looks like it's the much better revenue raiser and this actually isn't much of a surprise to me because 
China not only has a far lower average income rate than the EU and the USA, it's also got far higher personal savings rates. The, the Chinese are actually meticulous savers, but that saving does not lend itself to spending large amounts of money on microtransactions. However, I can tell you what China also has, much higher rates of income inequality than Western countries. If you compare the numbers, you can see China is quite a bit worse even than the USA. And this may help to explain where those high-end skin collectors are coming from. And one other final caveat, Dota 2 also has a significant following in other Asian countries, places like Taiwan, Singapore, Malaysia, Korea, Hong Kong. And these countries have far higher income levels than China and may help to balance out the difference a bit. But nonetheless, if you look at the basic metrics, CSGO pound for pound is still the better revenue generator. And there's no reason to think it can't raise a large price pool like the international does because of demographics. Now, it was pointed out in some of the discussions that CSGO hasn't really been able to grow its player base in recent years. And this is true, the player base has been mostly stagnant since early 2016. And it was suggested that this may be a reason why Valve doesn't want to do an event for CSGO that competes with their Dota 2 crowdfunding formula. Now, obviously I do not know what Valve's thinking is on the matter. I have no inside insight Although there have been rumors that the CSGO dev team likes to do things differently to the Dota dev team, but the reason it seems unlikely to me that the CSGO team isn't interested in crowdfunding because of its stagnant player base is this. Dota 2's player base has been in decline for years now. It peaked back in February 2016, but this hasn't deterred Valve from running the international. So I can't imagine CSGO's relatively stable player base is what's deterring Valve from doing crowdfunding for it either. And that just leaves the concerns about the international being disruptive to the Dota 2 professional scene. It's the big tournament, it makes or breaks careers, and it causes instability in the scene because of it, or at least people think it does. Now, I can't tell you whether this is actually correct or not. I don't follow Dota 2 enough to do that, although I think it is a, a valid concern. I mean, if it's true, that is definitely something to consider. But as I think almost everyone agrees, we don't need to directly follow the Dota 2 model with the international. We can keep our existing major system and just add in some sort of crowdsourced funding for the prize pool. And whether it's another esports case or some sort of pass that gives you special drops or some sort of challenger system like we used to get with operations or something else, my basic point is that CSGO has the ability to raise lots of money through this stuff. The scene is really big and it's got a demographic that's willing to spend. And the majors, as it is, already generate a lot of interest in the game, but I think there is a real missed opportunity here to take it to new levels using crowdfunding. And I'd like to see Valve take advantage of it because personally, I think this is just a massive squandered opportunity. Anyway, those are my thoughts. Let me know what you think in the comments. Also, this video is sponsored by earnerskin.com, a site where you can earn credits so you can cash out by watching ads and completing surveys. There's a ton of ways to potentially cash out. You can cash out through crypto, through PayPal, through Steam, all sorts of stuff. Logging in is all handled through Google, so you don't even need to specifically make an account. And if you're looking to get a small cash injection into your Steam account to start building up an inventory from, well, this could be a great way to do it. Anyway, that'll pretty much do it for now. If you enjoyed this vid, please like, comment, subscribe. I'd really appreciate it. Otherwise, Trust the numbers, not your guts. I'm Jesus. Thanks for watching. See ya.